So a couple quick notes. Um, I'm well aware that the website is down. In all likelihood, it will remain down. Um, I'm trying to find out what's wrong. <laughs> um, not something from a technical standpoint that's wrong. It's more from a they think I don't want a certain service anymore, and they canceled it without telling me. So it's kind of weird. So I'm trying to get it reestablished. Anyway, no big deal. Nothing you have to worry about. Should be back up, I hope, today or tomorrow. But because of that, you won't actually be able to post anything to the website today. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't work on everything today, and you can post it later. Um, so the, in terms of actually posting in part four on your exercise, you won't have to do that. But at some point, you will need to do that. Uh, so we're going to dive into Rhino in a little bit more depth. We're going to do a little bit more two-dimensional drawing. And then we'll start on three-dimensional drawing. Uh, today, and we'll, we'll work with a, a command that I think is one of the most important commands that you learn in Rhino, which is something called project. Um, that's in part five today. It's absolutely critical that you learn how to use that. You will use it over and over and over again going forward. Um, so we start with it very early, uh, but at the same time, we'll keep re reinforcing it many, many times as we, as we go forward. So I've gone ahead and I've opened up my same um, file from last class my exercise 202. And given that we're going to move on to exercise 203, I'm going to do a save as. So I'll say save as, and I'll save it as exercise 203. Go back here to a new folder here. Everything moves around when they change new folder. There we go. Exercise 203. And I'll go ahead and save. OK, and that just lets me go back to 202 if I wanted to. All right. And so fundamentally, I have uh, the basic floor plan. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, all right, we're going to have to go, um, I was going to do this out of order. But I'll do it in the order that I was, I was originally drawing in. Uh, and that is that I'm going to start by drawing a relatively simple south elevation of this particular building. And I'll do that by establishing the ground somewhere. And so it doesn't matter how far away it is, but it will pull it down somewhere in that vicinity, like that. And then I'll do an offset of this line. So I'll go up to curve, offset, curve, or excuse me, curve, offset, offset, curve, or I could just type offset. And we'll do a distance of maybe eight feet. Like that. So there's eight feet. You can do 10 feet, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're just learning how to model. Okay, So the technical details don't really matter. And so let me go ahead and connect from here to there. I'll hit Enter to finish. And I will connect from here to there. By the way, if you right click, you repeat the last command. Uh, and so there will be times where I just do that because it's complete habit for me. And I'll try to remember to tell you. But right clicking does repeat the last command. So I want to drop a point down from here. So again, I'm using that smart tracking, which means I'm going over the corner point and setting that little white dot and then pulling my mouse down. And you'll see that it'll jump to right there. And we'll draw this as well. Notice I do have my perpendicular object snap turned on. That way, it's really easy to create these nice rectilinear lines. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is to draw the hole where the window goes. And again. This is a rudimentary uh, view. I don't need much more than the basics. Okay? So let's say that I want a window here. And so we'll pull a line down. And actually, I'm just going to draw kind of an extra large line here, something like that. And I'll draw a line there. And I'm going to go ahead and offset this line down for the head height. So we'll say offset. Actually, let's do it from the bottom up. I'll do an offset of a distance of uh, how far off the floor? Three foot six, because this is where the kitchen was. We'll do that. And then we'll do an offset uh, of the top. Usually the head, the head height is six foot eight, so our offset distance would be one foot four. And again, it doesn't really matter. If you did a foot, that's fine. Okay. So I'll go down by one foot four. And now I've kind of boxed out where that window would be. And then I'll draw over the top of it for this particular window. I'm going to turn on, for right now, my intersect, int, so that I could go to that point, to that point like that. 
And then I can go ahead and delete these other lines. And I just select them and then press the delete key on the keyboard. And now I have where that first window would be. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's copy that window because we know it's here. It's the same window next to it. So let me take it. I'll copy it. I'm going to go to the transform copy. And it's going to say point to copy from. I'll copy from that point of the window right there. And we'll move it over to that point there. I could even go as far as moving it to that point. But notice my window isn't the same size. Okay, So if I did that, that would be fine. But I'd have to draw a larger window here. I can use a command called scale 1D. But this is probably a little bit beyond what you guys can do right now. But I'll show you for those of you that are interested in learning new things. Uh, if I took this and I went up to transform and under scale, it might be under edit. Nope. Scale. There we go. Scale 1D from this corner edge to there. I want it to become to there. And that scales it. It's just a cheater way of doing it. But you don't have to do it that way. If I didn't, right, and I still was back to the old thing, I would probably just draw starting here. Let me go back a step here. There. Easiest ways. Take the polyline tool, start at this corner. We'll go until we meet this, right like that. We'll go down to there. I'll press C for close. And then we could get rid of the first piece. So just like before, I could select this rectangle, and I can go to Edit, or excuse me, Transform, Copy from right there to right there. Now again, if your windows look different, no big deal, right? You're just you, the point is I'm trying to get some basics kind of established for you. So this essentially looks like a very basic version of the elevation, okay? And I could add more things like trim and whatever, but for right now all I really care about is the holes where the windows need to be cut. Okay? So they are joined um, polylines. So we come all the way around, and it's one continuous piece. Likewise, these are one continuous piece, which is important. Okay. So the next piece of this puzzle is I want to start working with layers to keep my file organized. And uh, for those of you that took 135, which is a lot of you, you remember we did layers in AutoCAD. And things got a little out of hand, and you needed the layers to help kind of organize. I'll tell you right now, working in Rhino, you absolutely have to have layers because there will be so many objects you won't be able to keep track of them. So you have to get in the habit of really organizing your files well. And so that's what we're going to do. Over here on the right in this panel, the second option that looks kind of like a red, white, and blue pie, that is the layers. And when you click on the Layers tab here, you can see that default is bold, and it has a check mark next to it. That's the layer that I'm currently drawing on. Okay. Below it, I have layers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The default template includes layers 1 through 5. Whether you choose to use those layers or not doesn't really matter. You can create more. You can delete them. It, it makes no difference. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making the floor plan all on its own layer. So let me take layer 1 here, and I'm going to double click on it so that I can rename this layer. And we'll call it floor plan. Okay. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then I'll take layer 2 here, and I'm going to call layer 2 elevation. Okay, So now I have floor plan and I have elevation. I'm going to go ahead and select the floor plan so that it's all selected. You see it's all yellow now. And I'm going to right click on the floor plan layer and say change object layer. That's how we change objects layers in Rhino. So I right click, I say change object layer. And we get confirmation that it's changed because the layer color is red, and the line color is now red. Okay? In the beginning, it's helpful to have different colors of lines. You get to the point, as you model in Rhino, that the colors really don't matter so much anymore, uh, especially once you start getting into materials, the colors don't matter at all. So um, a lot of things end up being black and white. Let me go ahead and select now my elevation. And now that I have the elevation selected, once again, I'll go to the elevation layer, right click on it, and say Change Object Layer. 
and it's now purple, which means it's on the elevation layer. Okay, so now I have the floor plan and I have the elevation. I'm going to go ahead and take layer three here, and I'm going to rename layer three to be 3D. Now let's call it 3D walls. Okay, one of the other things since we're talking about the layer um, plans here is that unlike AutoCAD or Illustrator or basically anything else you've worked in, Rhino works with nested layers if you want. So I could, for example, create a new layer and I could call that layer um, 2D drawing, for example, and I could take the floor plan and the elevation, I'm holding down shift when I do this, and I could drag them on top of 2D drawing and you now see that I have a 2D drawing layer that includes the floor plan and the elevation. The advantage of this is I can, I can collapse it, right? And when you have, imagine having 100 or 150 layers, right? It's helpful to have collapsibility in those layers, okay? So for right now, it's collapsible. That's good. It's on the 2D drawing layer. I have the floor plan and the elevation. I can turn off everything because I can turn off the 2D drawing layer. I could turn off just the floor plan or I could turn off just the elevation. Right, so it works really nicely as a nested layer. So it's good to get in the habit early of having these kinds of nested layers. I'm going to go ahead and make my 3D walls the current layer. And I can do that by putting the, where, where the check mark would go, I can click. And now the 3D walls layer is bold and the check mark is next to that. So that means if I were to draw something, it would be on the 3D walls layer. Make sense so far? All right. So now what we're going to do. Oh, no, we're going to do a rotate 3D first. I'm trying to stay in order. One of the things about Rhino is you can always do things out of order. And so I'm trying to be consistent with what you guys have here, even though I might do it in a different order off the top of my head. OK, so everything we've drawn thus far in class has been in the top view. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch my view. So I'll double click on the top view. And now I can see what I've drawn right there in the top view is there in the perspective view, and is here in the uh, front view, but it's right along the line. You can see kind of the purple line here and the red line here in the right view. Okay, So they exist in all four views. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the perspective view for now so that it's big, and I'm going to work in the perspective view. And so right now, because everything's flat, and remember to orbit, I just right click and hold down as I right click and I can orbit. Because everything's flat, there's nothing in three dimensions just yet. And I'd like to change that. So I'm going to take this elevation, and I'm going to rotate it up in the third dimension. And I'm going to do that using a command called Rotate 3D. And uh, last class, you may have experienced the regular rotate, which is rather simple. The regular rotate, you select your objects, you go up to Transform, and then Rotate. You pick a center of rotation and you rotate around that center of rotation. Rotate 3D, however, is for the th third dimension. So I'm going to go to Transform, Rotate 3D, and the first thing my command line is going to ask is the start of the rotation axis. So we're no longer rotating around a point anymore. We're rotating around a line. And so we have to specify which direction that line goes. And for some reason, when you guys first start doing this, there'll be some of you that just won't quite conceptualize, wait, which is the axis of rotation? And it'll just take practice for you to get it. But that's OK. You will get it soon. Okay. So the start of the axis of rotation, because I want to rotate around this line that goes along the bottom here, I'm going to set my start of rotation axis at this point, my end, which is the next question, at that point, and then it's going to say angle or first reference point. So I'll come up to the side here, and you'll see that it'll rotate up, so to speak. If I didn't have my ortho on, it would rotate at any degree. Okay, But since I want it to snap, I'm going to go ahead and turn on ortho so that it snaps right up to 90 degrees. And that now exists in the third dimension. Okay, So let me do it again. So I'll go to my Transform tool. I'll go to Rotate 3D. I need to select my objects. I'll hit Enter after selecting them. Start of rotation axis, right here. 
It's going to go along the length of the bottom, so the line around which I want to rotate. Go right there. Reference point will be the top of the wall, and I'll fold that up to be up like that. OK, so I now have Rotate 3D done for this elevation. I'm going to move on to part four, which is extrude. And this is actually the first true three-dimensional object we're creating. Okay, thus far, everything else is just lines. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the thickness of the walls here. Now, because these are actual three-dimensional walls, I want to make sure that they go on to the 3D walls layer. So again, that is my current layer. And I'm going to select the walls. Now, my walls are completely joined. They don't overlap. And the door is cut out. Okay, if yours aren't like this, you will run into some trouble. Okay, if and actually, let me go ahead and draw. I'm going to switch to the floor plan layer. I'm going to go ahead and draw this opening as well, since a lot of you will have this. All right. Let me go ahead and trim. My cutting objects will be there and there. Cut that piece out. Perfect. So in this case, because I haven't cut this out, that's going to be problematic. So I want to do a little bit more trim work. So I'm going to type trim, and I'll select these. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to get rid of that piece. Okay. And so these are still separate from my overall piece. So I want them all to join together. So let's select these, select these, and then we'll go up to Edit, and then Join. And I should get eight curves joined into one closed curve. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. So now that I have all of that put together, I'm going to select the walls. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the 3D walls layer. So I double click, make sure there's a check mark there. And I'm going to go up to, thus far we've done curve. We're going to move on to surface, and we're going to extrude curve, if I can find it. It's under solid. Yeah, it's under solid, excuse me. Extrude planar curve straight. Okay. The key command, which is what I always use, is extrude CRV, so for extrude curve. So we're going to go ahead and extrude planar curve straight. You can start to see we're getting a three-dimensional object here. But we want to pay attention to our options here. So we've got direction. We've got both sides. Obviously, we don't want both sides. Solid to yes. Okay. If we have solid to yes, we're going to get a top and a bottom for the wall. If solid were no, it would be hollow. Right. The wall is technically hollow anyway inside. But it's just do you want a cap on it or not. Okay. So we're going to make sure solid is yes. Delete input. This can be beneficial down the road if we don't want the floor plan anymore. Right? We extrude from something. We want to get rid of the object we extruded from and just keep the original object or the new object. You could do that. So for right now, we're fine. And the rest of these options are fine. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and type an extrusion distance. It should be 8 feet. So 8 apostrophe. I'll hit Enter. And you see that it created that object. It still looks very much like the wireframe or like the curves that we've been drawing so far. I'd like to see them kind of more concrete. And I'm going to do that by switching from wireframe mode to shaded mode. And so if I come here to the perspective text and I switch from wireframe to shaded, we'll now see a shaded version that will kind of confirm that, yes, in fact, those are solid objects. Okay? I know the blue is difficult for you guys to see on the projector, so I'm actually going to switch the color of my layer back to light gray so you can see it a little bit better. That should work easier for you guys to see. Okay? It doesn't matter if you're comfortable with it in blue when you're working, it's fine. The colors are, are, will never show up anywhere. They're just for your own reference. Okay, so now I have my overall piece. Let's say that I wanted to add in the top of the door. I could come over here to just this basic box. I could draw a basic box from there to there. And I could come down negative one foot four inches for the top of the door. And there it is. Okay. Yes, this is a separate piece from this, 
but long term, when we do the texture mapping, that'll be seamless. You won't, you can't tell that that's there. Okay. Likewise, I could do that box one more time. From here to there, and I could do negative one put foot four, or I could just snap to this box that I already have. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've created the basics of the walls. Now. We spent some time and we drew this elevation where we had these windows that were already here. Okay? And so it would be nice to be able to use that somehow on this object. And we could take these and we could move them carefully so that they were on the object. We could draw on the object itself and try to draw the windows. Right? But all of that's too complicated. So in comes the, the part five on your exercise which is the project command. And again, this is what I believe to be one of the most valuable tools that you will learn in Rhino. Right? Definitely something you'll use over and over again. Um, as things get more complicated, it will save you. Okay? So what project is going to do is it's going to take these objects and it's going to project them straight to whatever surface it touches. Okay? And it'll draw those on the object itself. Now there's a few quirks about how project works. Project works through your viewport and the angle of your viewport. So if I were to use project right now and try to project these, they would go straight into the computer and they'd miss my object altogether. Okay, They'd be exactly like I'm looking. So what I want to do is I want to initiate the project command in one of my views that shows the windows. So in this case, I don't see the windows. But right here in the front view, I can see the windows very clean. And if I were looking straight at it, I would want the projection to go straight to touch my object. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go up to, um, sorry, I always forget where it is. Curve, curve from objects, project. So it's under curve, curve from objects, project, or you can type project. Okay. By the way, on the, the handouts and online, whenever I reference something that you can actually type in, it's in a different little font. It's in like a typewriter font, so you should always be able to see that, that I'm referencing a specific command. Okay? Just I want to make sure I point that out. So it's curve, curve from objects, project. Okay? And again, I'm in the front view. And the easiest way to make sure that you're in the front view is to move your mouse over the front view and zoom in and zoom out a little bit. Right? This is kind of a, a darker blue than these are gray. That'll confirm that you're in this view. Okay? You could also click on front to make sure you're in that view. OK, so it says select curves and points to project. So I want to project this window, this window, this window, and this window. Okay, I don't need the, the borders. I don't need anything else. I just need those four windows. Okay, So select curves and points to project. Press Enter when done. So I've selected all four. I'll go ahead and press Enter. Next, it says select surfaces or poly surfaces to project onto. So in this case, I want to select my building, my walls. Okay, So I click on the walls. Remember, I'm doing everything in the front view. So I selected the objects. I selected the walls in the front view. It's very tempting to come over here in the perspective and click them, right? but it won't work. So it has to be in the front view. So I have those selected. Press Enter when done. Okay, And you'll see, as soon as I press Enter, that it takes these and it projects them right through my building. Now, it projects both to the front side and to the back side. So it doesn't distinguish how many crossings. Okay? So for example, this partial piece right there really isn't a value to me. So we'll go ahead and delete that little partial piece. But this piece is actually valuable. Okay? So if we move back to the perspective view and we look at it, now we can see that those windows exist on all sides, which is exactly what we're after. Okay, they're not cut through yet, but we see where the curves are. So once again, I'm going to practice with the pro project so that you guys can see it happen once again. So I'm going to go into the front view. I'm going to go to Curve, Curve from Objects, Project. Select Curves and Points to Project. One, two, three, four. I'll hit Enter. Select Surfaces. I'm going to select that surface right there. And it's always kind of helpful to reference what's going on here. But you have to make the selection in the front view. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. 
and it'll project those straight through uh, the walls. So now that I have those in the walls, it's time to do a little cleanup work. So let's take, oops, let's take this piece. And we can go ahead and delete it, because we don't need that piece. And now I want to actually cut through my building. Okay? And I have two different ways of doing this, and I'll show you both ways. Okay? The first way is hidden underneath the little Boolean command here. Okay? It's the two circles together. If you click and hold, you can come down here to make whole. Okay? It's, it's kind of a solid bluish rectangle with a hole cut in it, right? You select Make Hole, and it's going to say Select Planar Closed Curves. So part of the good news here is we know that this curve is planar because it was projected onto a planar surface. So I'll pick this curve, for example. I'll press Enter when I'm done. Select Surface. The surface is going to be the wall, so there it is. And then it says Select Depth Point, right? So I'm going to snap to the inside of the wall. So I'll snap right to there, to that corner. And it will then cut right through my building. OK, pretty slick. So let's do that one more time. So we're going to go up to Make Hole, right there. I believe you can type Make Hole. Okay. Select Planar Closed Curves. It's going to be this one. I'll press Enter. Select Surface or Poly Surface, there. And we're going to snap to the back side here. And now it's cut through that as well. Okay, So that's a pretty easy way of getting holes in your building. Okay? The other way would be to use the trim command. And I'll do the trim command here. But this involves a few more steps. So let me go ahead and use trim. So I'll go up to edit and then trim. It says select cutting objects. Well, the cutting object is going to be this. I'll press Enter. Select object to trim is going to be the surface. So I'll go ahead and select the surface. And now that's been cut through on that side. So let me flip around to the inside of the building. And once again, let me go back to Edit and then Trim. I'll select my curve again. There it is. Enter. And I'll trim that side of it. Okay. So I have a hole through my window, but I don't have, I have kind of a hollow wall in here. So I still need to fill those together. So I'm going to finish the command. I'll press Enter. And I'm going to select each of those curves. So we'll select the outside, hold down Shift, select the inside. Once I have both of those selected, I'm going to go up to Surface Loft, which you used in the first class. It's going to give me these little arrows. That's fine. Right? And I'll go ahead and hit Enter, and OK. And it will have filled in my window. So this is obviously the make hole is much faster. But if you run into trouble and it's not really working, sometimes doing a basic trim is an easier strategy. Right? And there's other strategies. You could, for example, use a box to do the trim and then trim both sides and create the, the opening. It doesn't really matter. So let me go ahead. Once again, I'll use this. And I'll use this as my cutting objects. I'll trim. I'm just typing trim, Enter. And I'll trim both of those out. I'll press Enter one more time to finish. And then I'll go to Surface, and then Loft, and then Enter. And now I've created that. Okay. There is always a bit of strategy to the order in which you select things. And you'll learn this. The faster you go, the, the way that you can keep a particular object select, selected. So for example, in this case, if I were doing that trim, right, I would select the first object, the second object. I would type Trim. I click through, 1, 2, Enter, followed by Loft, Enter, 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 and I'm done. So it's almost as fast for me as using the Make Hole. It might even be faster. It's just a matter of practice. Does that make sense? Okay. So obviously, it's going to take you guys a while to get through this today. And I know I can kind of make it look like it's really easy and it'll go really fast. It's OK. Take your time. If you finish one elevation, draw another elevation and try to project that. Right? You could even take it as far as adding a little bit of trim. right? So maybe I want to have a little piece of trim. I could start here. I know that this window is 2 feet. So I could say at 2 feet, comma, negative 1.5 inches, 
And then I could say I want it to be negative 5.5 inches. And there's the first piece of trim on that window. Right? And I did it just with the box. Okay? I could take this piece of trim. I could copy it so that it goes at the top of the window like that. Right? The point is it's, it starts to become much easier to continue to make things um, from here. But I'm not asking you to do that. We're just trying to cut the holes through the walls. I just like to point that out. Okay? So once again, on the make hole, if I was going to do that, I'm going to select make hole, select planar closed curves. Oops. Oh, by the way, if you are trying to select something and you make a mistake and you select the wrong thing, if you hold down the control key, it will undo selections. So if I hold down control and I click on that, that'll go away. And then I can click back on this piece. So one of the great things that's different from AutoCAD in Rhino is that you can shift to add, control to subtract. So they're separate operations. Okay? So there it is. There's my planar closed curve. Select my poly surface. There it is. And we're going to punch through right there. And now I have that piece. Okay? So when you're all done with your, with your work for today, obviously save the file. We'll use it again. So I'll go to File and then Save. And then I want to capture a JPEG of my um, building here. So I'll click on the little triangle. I'm going to go to Capture, to File, and I want to save this JPEG on my, in my course, on my flash drive here. So let, let's see, this is Exercise 203. And I'll go ahead and save. And that'll give me that JPEG file that I could ultimately post. But again, the website's down, so you can't post it today. But we'll post it next class. Okay. Are there any questions about what I went through? Okay. Some of you will breeze through this. Some of you, it will take a while. That's OK. We're just getting the basic stuff under our belt. Yes, I'll come over and I'll help you. So hold on one second, and then we'll keep going. Are there any questions for everybody as a whole? No? All right.